Well, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> Amen. Kids are all hyped and excited about all the snow, so just change and become like a kid. Just get dressed up and go to and do all the fun things. I'm sure you'll enjoy winter a whole lot more. Yeah, and uh, we're starting a new series, like we'll be going through the Christmas story. So as I was praying about it, I, the Lord just uh, spoke to me and said the words of Isaiah 9, for unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Precious Prince of Peace, and of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. And the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Glory to God. So, Father, we just pray. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is leading and guiding us and has something to say to us, Lord, not only collectively, but also individually. It's something your spirit is saying to the churches, Father. You come to reassure us, Father, that you are in control, Father, and we just give you praise. We welcome you, Lord, here in our midst, and we ask you to come and speak to us. And Father, we ask in Jesus' mighty name that, that Lord, you would have the rulership. You would reign and rule over our hearts and lives as well in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's hard to keep it simple. The Holy Spirit said to me, keep it simple uh, this morning. So uh, I'll try to do that. But it's kind of cool. You start out on this scripture and you try to find a little bit about the background. And so I want to say to you um, something I learned about prophecy. If you can think of a mountain range with its peaks and valleys, that here Isaiah is a prophet, and he's speaking under the direction and power and unction of the Holy Spirit. But the past and the present and the future uh, kind of take its peaks because he's speaking to the people in their situation uh, right there and then. But then he'll prophesy hundreds and even uh, I think it's 500 years uh, uh, farther into the future. And then, um, could I have that orange folder there? Frank just gave me this out of the blue. Uh, and he says, you might like it, you might not. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Let me read this to you. There are uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, there are two days we should not worry about. So we shouldn't worry about it. One is of them is yesterday. Yesterday may have come with mistakes, regrets, its faults, and blunders, gave us some aches and pains, but yesterday has passed forever, and it's beyond our control. All of the money in the world cannot bring back yesterday. We cannot undo a single act we have performed, erase a single word we have said, yesterday's gone. But I know somebody who can erase that through the blood of Jesus. Amen. And the other day not to worry about is tomorrow. Tomorrow will warn of possible adversities and problems. Tomorrow offers large promise and of poor performance. Tomorrow the sun may rise in brilliant splendor or massed in clouds, but we have no stake in it. Tomorrow is forever unborn. We are then left with just one day today. Anyone can fight the battles of just one day. It is only when we add the burdens of the two eternities, yesterday and tomorrow, that we break down. The experience of today is not what destroys us. It is remorse and bitterness about what happened yesterday and the dread of what tomorrow may bring. Therefore, let us live that one day we have. Let us live for today. And then there's scripture, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past, see, I'm doing a new thing. And I believe God is saying that to us prophetically. This is the day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow has enough trouble of, its, of itself, but each day has enough trouble of its own. And yet we find that God 
uh, cares about the future. And then on the other hand, he doesn't do anything without revealing it to his prophets. Amen. So we, we try to find this beautiful balance, don't we? And, and we find that challenge today in our political world, and so did Isaiah. And Isaiah was speaking in the previous chapters uh, to a whole lot of r very real problems. Amen. There were kingdoms that were uh, coming against the, their nation and wreaking devastation. And it is at that time in Isaiah 6, uh, the, the Lord, the day that King Uzziah died, the beginning of a new era. So I, I'm believing God is saying, I'm, I'm doing a new thing. Amen. We do have a new era. And at that point, Isaiah offers his life to the Lord. The Lord says, who shall I send? And he says, here I am, send me, Lord. And so that is such an important thing. We can only start with us, can't we? We can only start with today, and we can only start with us. We can only offer ourselves, here I am, uh, Lord, send me. If there's a problem, that is a very good thing to do. It's like, here I am, send me, God. He's looking for someone to execute the plan of God, to speak the word of God, uh, to declare those things that are not as though they were. And Isaiah instantly is come over. God takes him up on it, and he will take you up on it. When you say, here I am, here's today. I give you today. I give you my heart, my mind. All that I have, as we sang this morning, is yours. I place it at your feet. And so Isaiah does that. And in that place of spiritual surrender, the Lord speaks to him and he, he speaks, he sends him to the current political situation. So, do you know, some people don't like us to talk about political things, but it's like the whole prophecy, everywhere you look, Isaiah, Jeremiah, they all speak into the affairs that are, are affecting the people right there and then. And they've got the names of the kings and the, uh, the different ones. So, it, like, it does matter. It is important in these days, in this hour, if it's recorded in history. Yes, we can't worry about history, but we can learn from history history, and we can do as the prophets did. Here am I, send me. Do I have a part to play in all of this? Did Isaiah have a part to play in this? Can, did that make a difference to his day? And, it, it, and yes, God had a place, and he had a specific call for him to do, and so God has called us for such a time as this. This is our day. This is our hour. This is, this is where we get to make his story. And just staying within the rank and staying within the, the guidelines of not overstepping and not, not doing enough can be a mistake as well. So he surrendered himself, and that's where we, where we need to start. Here am I. Send me. What difference can I make even when it comes to little things like bringing coats, that's going to matter to somebody. They're going to might. You know, it's those little things that people say, like, oh, my goodness, this coat came at the right time. It just happened to be there. It wasn't even in my plan, and it fits me. And it might be, uh, you know, pray over those coats. Pray over those ones, those people that will wear those. Pray for their salvation. Uh, we can do those little things that matter most. And here he's just a humble servant saying, here am I, send me. And then God sends him to speak into the political situation. And he says, go and talk to, go to the king and go meet him. And t tell the king, be careful, keep calm, don't be afraid, don't lose, your, don't lose heart because these two smoldering stubs of firewood, because of the fierce anger of all of these, and he goes on their names, he said, they plotted your ruin, but don't be afraid, stay calm. Amen? And so he has a word for the king. And I'll tell you, that, that, that I'm sure that, that was great comfort to this king. He's saying, uh, don't you worry about him, because all the things that he says in verse um, 7, it says, it will not take place, and it will not happen, because the Lord is with you. 
And then he says to him, if you don't stand in your faith, in verse 9, if you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. So he tells them, don't worry, because what they're saying is going to happen isn't going to happen at all, because God is on the scene and he's in this situation. Amen? And then he says, and then he tells them, if you don't stand in your faith, you're not going to stand at all. Well, if you were in that situation with all of this pressure for the whole nation coming at you, and you got a word like that, tell me that didn't matter. Would that have happened if Isaiah didn't avail himself to the Lord? He avails himself to the Lord. The Lord sends him. This changes all of history. Amen? It's that hinge, that prophetic word changes everything. And he says, don't worry about it. It won't happen. So we can declare and decree the plans of the enemy comes to rob and kill and destroy, but in Jesus' mighty name, it will not happen. Amen? So along those lines, if you do not stand in your firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. If God could close the lion's mouth for Daniel, part the Red Sea for Moses, make the sun stand still for Joshua, open the prison doors for Peter, put a baby in Sarah's arms, amen, raise Lazarus from the dead, he can certainly take care of this time in this history. This I got, Diane printed this off. I just happened to find it. I said, yay, I'll, uh, I'll put that in my notes. Glory to God. This? This is just, uh, that's not a part of the Bible. That's just... That's just, if God can do this, this is taking pages out of history. Amen. Is God the same yesterday, today, and forever? If he cares about these things. Joshua's in the middle of a battle. He's living in the present. And he needs a little bit more time. I called, you answered. And you rescued. Amen. You, we call. And we call unto the Lord, Help! Help Jesus. Please, Jesus, help me. I need a little bit more time. We're doing good. But could you please make that sun stand still? He's, he responds to faith. Our God, he responds to faith. He rescues. He hears. He answers. Amen? And so he's telling him, if you don't stand with faith, you're not going to stand at all. We need faith today in, the, in our situations. We could preach pie in the sky in everything history. See, I grew up in a denomination when it was all about Hezekiah and Isaiah, but there was never the, the it's like, what does that got to do where, where I live? I got real situations going on in my life, and I got real problems, but if you don't, if, you don't, if it's never where the rubber meets the road, but it's the same God. And does he love you and does he love us in this time of history? Or is he the same yesterday, today, forever? And we got to apply that. God, Elijah was a man just like us, just like us. I love that scripture. And he prayed that it would rain, and it rained. He prayed that it wouldn't rain, and it didn't rain. And then he said, okay, God, now let it rain. It's like God gives us that authority. So that's where we're heading this morning about the faith. And then he says, therefore, he tells this king, he says, uh, ask him for a sign. He even goes farther. He got a prophetic word. And he tells him, stand by faith. And he gives him that instruction. Stand for, if you don't stand by faith, you're not going to stand at all. And then he says, and, and just, just for your confirmation, ask God for a sign. And he goes, no, no, no. I'm not going to try the patience of my God also. I've already tried the patience. I'm not going to ask for a sign. He says, well, God's going to give you a sign anyways. And then he says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and call his name Emmanuel. That's God with us. Amen? So he's going, I'll give you a sign. But then he speaks into tomorrow. That didn't happen then. So we see these mountain peaks. Now, now Isaiah, by the Spirit of God, is speaking into the future. What do we get with that? Is again... It doesn't matter. God was faithful in the time past to Moses, amen, to Elijah, to Joshua. And God is going to be faithful 
in the future, the next mountain, and, and the next mountain. Because Jesus is always the answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. I, I just could think of different songs that come to my mind. Amen. Songs that Jesus is the answer. He's always the answer. You know, when you ask kids, what did they learn in Sunday school? Jesus. I learned about Jesus. Jesus is the answer for the world today. No matter what we're facing, what's the answer? Oh, God, I don't know what to do. It's in Jesus. Just call on the name of Jesus and thou shall be saved. Amen? Not just saved for all of eternity. Does he care about your today? Does he care about if you need one more hour? Does he care if you need a word from God? Does he care? Amen? Are we to play roles in different people's lives? Yes, yes, yes. It's not just, we don't just live que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be not. Not. We are the salt. We are the light. What we say is going to put wind in somebody's sail. Is going to show the, the direction. God will use someone else, put someone else in our path to say that word, to give that prophetic word, to confirm. Oh, my goodness, how did they know that? To say that. Now I just know without a shadow of a doubt this is what God is saying. So that, what I want to call today's message basically is the gift that keeps on giving. Have you ever had a, a gift given to you and it just keeps on giving? It'll bring back that awesome warm memory of, you know, it could be something so practical. It could be that one kitchen gadget or that one awesome thing. And every time you use it, it'll put a smile on your face. You just think of that person who gave that to you. Just, it'll, it'll just, it's that gift that keeps on giving. And Jesus is that gift that just keeps on giving. He's, he's, he, we'll never lose him. Amen? And he's always the answer for our world today, right where we are at. And then, then going into uh, what... Isaiah sec said next, and then there's more gloom. It's, you could read Isaiah 8 in your spare time. I won't go through it all for the sake of time. But you think you are reading about our situation today, especially these words. Do not call conspire, conspiracy everything this people calls a conspiracy. Don't fear what they fear and do not dread it. The Lord Almighty is the one you should regard as holy. He's the one you should fear. He's the one you should dread. He will be a holy place, a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. It's like, oh my goodness, oh Lord, you are using this situation to test hearts. It's like we can have the rock fall on us or we can fall on the rock. Lord, we need you. But it's like it's going to make or break you. This, these situations of testing, it's like what, does, what are you made out of? And that's not because God is mean. Sometimes he's like, oh God, I need, this is a weak area. It's not standing up to the test of faith. If you're fa faith, if you're not standing by faith, you'll, you won't stand at all. And sometimes God's showing us, we need to, we need to bulk up a little bit. <laughs> Amen? We need to bulk up. We need to prepare for what is ahead. Warriors prepare. Athletes prepare. Amen? Farmers prepare. We need to be prepared. And it's like, Lord, is there an area? Amen? And, and what is God is saying? He's always using what plays out in history ultimately to get people to the place of surrender and the word of God and regarding uh, the word of the Lord. They're living, um, this is the word that Isaiah gets in chapter 8, 20. Consult God's instruction and his testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Distressed and hungry, they will roam through the land. And there's, he's saying there's going to be consequences. There's going to be choices. Amen. And we need to live according to the word. That's the only weapon we have. It's the only hope we have. His word is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. Want to know what day we live in? Want to know what God is saying by his spirit? It's like, God, speak to me. Amen. There's a word for today. There's a word for our situation. And then 
He says, nevertheless, in verse 9, I love that word, nevertheless. So no matter what the bad news is, nevertheless, here's some good news. There'll be no more gloom for those who are in distress. And then he prophesies in verse 2, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light and those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. And so, again, God is saying it's Jesus. Amen. Jesus came, again, one of these mountain peaks, Isaiah is speaking and saying, it's going to be in the land of Naphtali, he's speaking directly into the future and saying, this is what is, what's going to happen. And again, the solution being Jesus, the solution being in the light of the word, walking in the light that we are being given, amen? Jesus said, if you walk in the light as I am in the light, you would ask whatever you wish, and it shall be done for you. Amen. It's that gift that keeps on giving. And then, again, the prophetic word comes to us. Here's the solution. For, to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders. Oh, this is so chock full. I just started at the word for. So what's this for? Have you ever opened a gift? So what's this for? I got a can opener from... Ashley's mom, she sells fancy kitchen gadgets, and I brought it back after weeks. I said, she, I said I'm taking this back. I just bought a dollar store one. Uh, it, this thing doesn't work. She says, come on in. <laughs> she gets a whole bunch of tin cans, and she shows me how this thing works. And all with a flick of a wrist, you're supposed to turn it backwards, one turn so that it releases it off the can. And, and it's like, you know, I got this fancy gadget. I'm tired of buying new can openers. I'm going to splurge and buy one. And so this dumb thing, it doesn't work. But it's not that it doesn't work. It's just this, no, she goes here. She goes, this happens to everybody. It works different than regular can openers. Anyways, you just, have you ever gotten something and you're going, What's this for? Remember Pastor Eric came to our house and I had a whole basket for his, of toiletries for him in the downstairs bathroom. And he didn't know what deodorant was for. So he twirled this deodorant stick until all the little curlies, you know, one of those ones that come, and they just, all the garbage was full of all these little curlies. I think he was having fun playing with this thing. Like, what the heck is this for? Okay, Pastor Eric, that's supposed to be for under your arm. So you smell, see, it smells nice. But it's like, do you ever have something? It's like, what is this for? And I'm going, God, no matter what our problems, God has a solution. This is what this is for. And it's always for, out of this distress, out of our problems. That's what Jesus is for. Amen. Some people don't know why Jesus came into the world, that they are a sinner. They need to know why Jesus came. It was for them. It's for you. Here, let me show you how this works. Amen. You need to repent of your sin. You need to acknowledge that you're a sinner. You need to receive him because as many as received him, he gave power to become sons of God. Amen. This is how this works. Now you can't just go out there. You need to get in the word every day and you need to spend time with Jesus and fellowship and prayer and you need to grow and you need to be in fellowship and in accountability. And this is what Jesus is for. And this is how it works. This is the manual. This is how it works. And so it's for us, for to us, to us. Do you ever see those little things you put on the Christmas presents? To mom, from, right? And you've got to and from. Who's this to? It's to you, for to us, not just to me, not just to me. And the wonderful thing about uh, to us is it's like our Father. We're including everyone. We're not just saying He's just for me. He's, but it's to us. You say, somebody was born, a beautiful another baby girl was born to, yeah, so-and-so. Then you say the parents' names, right? And you just go, it's born to them. But this is to us. This child is to us. To us, uh, child, a child, 
I immediately saw in my spirit as I was in, uh, meditating on it, there's a billboard going out towards Elmer, and it shows this little baby in the womb, and it's, it says on the billboard, one of us. Why did God send us a baby? Right? And it's like, because he's one of us. He came in the most humblest ways. He says he can sympathize with all of our weaknesses. He's been through all of the stages. There's nothing he can't relate to. He's a high priest able to sympathize with our, our weaknesses. Everything he's been through, all the stages. Amen. He's able to sympathize with our weaknesses. That's what makes him an incredible high priest that we can go to him. He's one of us. So to, to us, a child is born, and to us, a son is given. Could anybody give anything more precious? Ask a parent. It's like, what is the most precious thing that you have, that you own? And then it would be your child. It, it just, there's nothing that gets to me, and the enemy knows that. There's nothing that can get to me more than if, 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 if some attack is coming against my child. And if you're a real, a real parent and you got Jesus on the inside of you, you just see your kid tripping and falling and skin in their knees. It's like you can feel it. You just can't get there fast enough. You're picking them up and you're, you're feeling it. Amen. And that's, that's how our Jesus is like. He's, he, he, our God, he so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. It's like, could he give it anything more greater? He's that, that gift that keeps on giving. Amen. The Father's love is so great. He, he loves the world so much that he gave. And he's the gift that keeps on giving because every morning when I wake up, his mercies are new every morning. Amen. It's not going to diminish it just grows brighter and brighter. It just gets more lovely and more intense. And there's always another facet of his love and his faithfulness and of his grace that just keeps getting new and keeps being more and more wonderful. And then the government will be on his shoulders. But I think I'm going to say that whole package because that is just so big and deep and wide, goes right into, the, into Jesus' teaching and, and affects the church and into the future. So it's so wonderful. It takes you right into the book of Revelations about the government being on his shoulder. So it's all about the government. But that's another day. It just always gets bigger. It's like the piece of meat in your mouth. It, it just gets bigger. <laughs> It, the more you chew it, the more wonderful it is. But Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving. That's why we give gifts at Christmas, to remind us of that great, great gift. You give that gift that just means so much that you're excited to give. Amen. Just to re change our perspective, like, thank you for sending Jesus, Father. We just close in prayer, Father, this um, beautiful word. Father, we thank you for your beautiful word. That's so alive and so living and powerful and so sharp. And, Lord, thank you that it transforms us by the renewing of our minds. Lord, make us more and more like you. Lord, that gift that just makes us be more like you, Jesus. We want to be like you. We want to be where you are, Lord, that we know we live in today. And, and, Lord, for today, we pray that you would be that miracle that each one of us needs right now, right here, where we are at. Lord, we pray for a sign. We pray, Father, for a sign. We pray uh, for a sign to know that you are working in our present situations, that you are a God who changes things, that turns things around, Father. Thank you for turning things around in our hearts, in our lives, Lord, in our families, Lord. What a difference you have made, Jesus, and we thank you, Lord. We're praying, Father, for others, even this moment, Father, that you would do something that only you can do. You can change uh, the clock. You can change it back. You can change hearts as easy as a watercourse. And, and we look to you to do that in Jesus' name. name. Amen. Amen. And poof, there they were. <laughs> You folks want to just join us in standing and singing the last song. It's called The Goodness of God. I feel like this is kind of a love song to the Lord. Uh, when I first heard this song, it just 
Yeah, just resonated, and I, I have a feeling it will resonate with you as well. God is good, amen. I love your voice. 